imagine a Formula One car as an upside down aeroplane. As the air passes over the bodywork, it forces the car into the track. They generate easily more than double their own weight. In theory, they could drive along the ceiling. As air passes underneath the car and the wings, it's forced to accelerate, creating low pressure areas. The higher pressure above creates a downward force, squashing the tyres ever harder into the tarmac for more grip. This downforce comes at the price of drag, which the engineers work very hard to minimise and that maintains a competitive top speed. McLaren have gained an advantage in 2010 by perfecting the F-duct device, which reduces drag and downforce on the straights. The regulations create imaginary boxes where the designers cannot put any bodywork at all, but the areas where they are allowed to work, they really go to town. Most teams run their wind tunnels 24-7 alongside complex computer simulations. The front wings in particular are a work of art. They are critical for the airflow over the whole car and the devil is in the detail. Let's compare these two Red Bull wings which their drivers were fighting over at Silverstone. Even the camera mounting positions are optimised for aerodynamic performance. The teams must simulate internal cooling and exhaust airflow. Blown diffusers use hot exhaust gas to speed up the air under the back of the car. The complex bodywork required costs hundreds of thousands of pounds to develop. It's always a balance between corner grip and top speed. The teams have a range of aero packages to select from according to the track layout. Small wings for top speeds required at Monza, maximum wings for twisty tracks like Monaco and Hungary.